Welcome back to the BigML tutorial series. In this video, we will be learning how to create a model from a BigML dataset in a single click. To begin, we will talk a little bit more about what supervised learning is and when you should use it. Then, we will talk about BigML's most basic supervised model type, the decision tree, and how it generates predictions from data. Finally, we will give you a brief tour of the visualization BigML's dashboard uses to display and explain the behavior of its decision trees after they are created. Let's begin with a brief reintroduction to supervised learning. When we say supervised learning in the machine learning world, we are referring to a type of machine learning where the goal is to predict the value of some field in your data using some of the other fields as input. A good example here is medical diagnosis. A doctor gathers a bunch of information about a given patient, taking their temperature, weighing them, ordering blood tests, and so on, and then uses this information to predict whether or not the patient has some disease. In supervised learning, we compose a data set of such patients for which we already know the value we want to predict, such as whether or not they have a given disease. We will call this the objective value. By examining the information about each patient and how it relates to the objective value, BigML's supervised learning algorithms can train a model that predicts the objective value from the other input values. These learning algorithms are called supervised because the data we use for training must contain the correct value for the objective. The idea of supervised learning is very general. You can use the same methods to predict if a credit card transaction is fraudulent, if a shopper will want a particular product, or the salary of a student after graduating college. For this tutorial, we will be using a popular medical diagnosis dataset that predicts whether or not a person has diabetes based on certain physiological characteristics, such as their BMI, age, blood sugar level, and the number of times they have been pregnant. By default, BigML assumes that the last field in the dataset is the objective field. In the case of this dataset, that is correct, and so we can just use the cloud action icon to create a model in one click. The most basic supervised model type in BigML is the decision tree. A decision tree is a flowchart style sequence of questions and answers about a data point, where the answers to those questions determine the tree's prediction of the objective value. In BigML's visualization of the decision tree, the colored circles, or nodes, represent questions, and the lines leading from those circles represent the possible answers to those questions. Hovering over any node in the tree shows the sequence of questions and answers leading to that node in the area to the right of the tree. As you can see in this tree, the first question asked at the top or root node of the tree is about the glucose or blood sugar level of the patient. If we mouse over the two child nodes that are connected to the root node, we see that the left node represents patients with blood sugar of less than or equal to 129, and the right node represents patients with blood sugar of greater than 129. So, when trying to determine if a person has diabetes or not, the first question asked by the model is whether or not a person has a blood sugar level of greater than 129. Focusing on the right side of the tree, we see that the next question the model asks of those patients is whether or not they have a BMI of greater than about 30. The questions and answers proceed in this way, making a decision path, until we reach a green leaf or terminal node where the model makes its prediction. In the rightmost leaf node, for example, after asking questions about a person's BMI, blood sugar, and blood pressure, and getting certain answers, the model is ready to conclude that this person is likely to have diabetes. You will also notice that mousing over any node in the tree gives you a summary of the instances from your training data that made it to this node. Looking again at the two children of the root node, we see that 258 of the patients in the training data have blood sugar levels greater than 129. In addition, the model gives the prediction it would make if it had to make a prediction based only on the questions asked so far, and its confidence in that prediction as a quantity from 0 to 100 percent. So for this node, if the model could only ask the single question, is the patient's blood sugar level greater than 129, and the answer to that question was yes, the model would predict true, that this person does have diabetes, with a confidence of about 
At the green terminal node that we visited earlier, the model is more confident. All of the 14 patients who followed this decision path have diabetes, and so the model predicts true with a higher confidence, close to 80%. One thing you may notice about the tree is that some nodes appear to have only one branch leading from them. This is because most trees are too big to fit on the screen, and so some of the nodes are hidden. Clicking on any node displays the full decision path leading to that node. Clicking on the root node again displays the full tree in compact form. If you're looking for nodes that meet a certain criteria, you can dynamically filter the displayed nodes based on how many training instances that node represents, what the prediction of the node is, and how confident the node is in its prediction. Here, we can isolate the three leaf nodes in the tree that predict that a person has diabetes with greater than 75% confidence. Predictions for models are not limited to categorical fields. You can also predict numeric values. For example, we could also try to predict the blood sugar levels of a patient without knowing whether or not they have diabetes. To do this, we'll return to the dataset and mark plasma glucose as the objective field. Next, we'll mark diabetes as a non-preferred field so it won't be used in the model. Training a one-click model, we see that the top split in the decision tree is on the patient's insulin level, showing the expected relationship between blood sugar and insulin. The model now predicts a number instead of a class, and the summaries at each node of the tree show a histogram of the objective values for the instances represented by that node. In summary, supervised learning is the process of training a model to predict an objective value using a data set where that objective value is already present. The most basic type of supervised model in BigML is the decision tree, which is a flowchart style diagram of your training data set. Hovering over and clicking on the nodes in the decision tree allows you to see information about the portion of the data that corresponds to that node. Finally, the same techniques can be used to predict numeric values as well as categorical values.